David Beckham, we all know him. Some Ooh. of us love him. I don't know. He's a handsome man. Uh, Inner Miami owner, guy who brought Messi to the USA. So you know Brooks loves him. Um, all right, we, mm. we're going to talk about the documentary, the documentary that was recently released on him. Uh, it's a, uh, it's on Netflix, by the way. Pretty good documentary, but we've all got some thoughts on it. We've all been watching it over the past week or so here. Uh, Nate, uh, why don't we start with you, my friend? So what, as what a thought? former Blockbuster employee. <laughs> oh, holy shit, I still got my Blockbuster <laughs> card. Can yeah. I use that? Uh, no, uh, uh, we revoked those unless you're in Alaska. So as a former man of the film industry, if you will, I'll just uh, parlay. What did he just say? Film industry, blockbuster. You're a man of the film industry because you worked at Blockbuster. Yeah. Well, you got more experience than I do. Yeah. Words. I mean, <laughs> yeah. All right. I've seen my fair share of documentaries. If I've you seen will. your OnlyFans. I'm not surprised. I know. So, <laughs> so, um, from a just starting out with this thing to break the ice before we get into the details and the nitty gritty. If you haven't seen it, it's a, I think it was a very well shot, very highly uh, entertaining documentary. Even if you're not a Beckham fan, even if you're not a Manchester United fan, it is a well-told story, I thought. The way they set it up, the way they filmed it, the way they shot it, the, the, how it flowed, how it built, how it like transitioned from... from because there's sometimes you watch documentaries and they're really hard to watch. They're boring. They're just it's it's not entertaining. They don't flow right. They don't explain things well. And I thought just starting out before getting into any of the nitty gritty, I thought if if you haven't seen it yet, you should watch it. Just even as an entertainment value, it was good. Far better than Wrexham season two so far, which has been absolute poor, if you ask me. For all, for lacking for all the reasons that I just labeled that made actually season one very good. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, understood. Brooks, what, uh, what, did, what did you think of the, uh, the documentary on David Beckham, my friend? Yeah, so, okay, so obviously all the viewers know that I'm the youngest on the show. I'm, I'm not, whoa, I'm not, whoa. I'm not, not, no, 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 hold on, hold on, what hold was on. What's the point of saying that? Hold on. People you... thought I was the youngest. <laughs> Listen, you guys lived the David Beckham, like you, like from when he started there to the end of his career. I did not. I, I, I yes. you know, I was like probably, I'm talking like Real Madrid, you know, into his LA Galaxy days. Remember some highlights from his Man United days, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, I will say this. It, I agree with Nate. It was very well produced. I like, you know, how sometimes they forward to the present then then yeah. back like they they connect things very well it was yep. very well connected yep. mm-hmm. i enjoyed the victoria beckham's take on things because i think did. she would well yes yes posh is posh is very uh yes yes poshy whatever that means but yeah but go for it yep. um but anyways but uh, they integrated her and him and then other important people within you know the scenarios of what had happened i think they interviewed all the right people and just the story was very interesting because I knew, you know, I knew things, but I didn't, you know, like I said, I wasn't born then. I didn't know how bad, you know, when, you know, the kick on Simeone and how much crap he took for that. I still don't like Glenn, Glenn Hoddle. He, I'm sorry. He's he's a wanker. I'm sorry. I don't like him. I thought that was unfair treatment to Beckham, um, especially to someone that young. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed how Landon Donovan talked about his experience with David Beckham in, in the locker room with LA Galaxy and, and what was talked about. I think that was great, you know, where, you know, whoever the inter- interme- intermediary was to, within the conversation to say, like, David, you have to understand, this is Landon's Manchester United, LA Galaxy. This means the world to him. And then snap, like, David's like, okay, I get it. Like, I got I to gotta put more time in here. I can't just think about going back to Europe. So there were a lot of good things for me that I really enjoyed about his journey and then the story. Okay. And All yeah, right. so you uh you undersold it a little bit there because you've been raving about this for like really? a week now. You've been raving. So Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm really going had. to more but, after him, but yeah. I, I mean, I'm not wrong, right? Like he no. he mentioned it two or three times in the group text. Did He's, I really? This yeah. is the second letdown this week. Yeah. From me? Yeah. From you. Yeah. From Man. group text yeah, absolutely. and things you've What was the first? And re- Oh, you know. Oh, them. we'll get you to know. that in the next week. No. no, we'll get to that. <laughs> oh, no, you know. You know. You have to do with the picture that was posted yes. on the Facebook. Yes. Yep. You're yes. doing it, and we all want to tear it. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Uh, at some point, we'll do it. Uh, before we before we get there, though, let's finish out the Beckham documentary. So it is uh, titled Beckham. Uh, Danny, this now. 
uh, Nate, you are a Manchester United fan, but 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 Nate, you are a Manchester United fan. You are a big fan of Manchester United. You know all the stories. Brooks is not necessarily a Manchester United fan. He's not a hater. So he knows some of the stories, but I expect it. But to me, and, and no offense to anybody else in the room, Brooks is a one hundred percent American soccer fan and likes the English Premiership game and is still learning about what happened in the 90s and 2000s. Yes. N- so Nate? to be honest, yep. like a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff that happened, and basically I didn't start following United until he left. Okay. Not because okay. of him. So yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of that was very, very okay. new to me. Yeah, yeah. I lived um, it. Say so yeah. what? And I lived it. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't yeah. live any of that. So you like, you you, you kind of okay. So I didn't yeah. know that. So that's no, yep. good. Yeah. I was I was more like uh 2000. I would say 2006, 2002, somewhere around there. Okay. Wh- when I jumped in, I was okay. the Rooney era. Yeah. You know that era. That just, just after he left. Just right? after he left. Okay. You know. So, I so I knew who he was. I knew what he was. But I wasn't. I didn't experience now all that stuff in the now beginning. Danny grew up in England and around this area and, and lived it and, and breathed it and had the haircuts. Mm-hmm. Danny, uh, I, I will, I will get, I will let you go at it and have your thoughts, and then I'll put mine in, and then we'll have a discussion about the whole thing. Yeah, no, I, a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of it, I already knew, you know, from his childhood, you know, from the time he came to Manchester United, how he came to Manchester United, um, you know, when he won the Youth Cup, and then when he broke into the first team with the rest of the class of '92. Um, so I, I knew a lot of it. There was some stuff. There was some, some really good surprises. I've got five of them here that I kind of want to. Can I touch on some bullet points? You're going to need to na- name those off because, yeah, I need to know what is <laughs> what you didn't know. That was, that's interesting. That yeah, so there were some that. surprises that I didn't know. So the first one was I didn't realize at the time the severity of what he went through when he got sent off mm-hmm. um, against Argentina in the 98 World Cup. I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize how bad it was, not just from a public standpoint, but from an internal emotional standpoint of what he went through. Gonna let you. F- I got a, a little bit of a counter to that, but I'm gonna let you finish. Sorry, go ahead. I want, I want to hear the five fully ones, but yeah, yeah that so makes I, d- sense. I didn't realize how bad it was. The second one was I wasn't. I wasn't aware at the time um, that United had agreed a fee with Barcelona mm. for Beckham when Sir Alex walked into Carlos Quiros office and was like, "We're selling Beckham." Yep. I didn't realize it was that Barcelona. It was Barcelona, and then when when David um, called Sir Alex and wanted to talk with him, and he said, "No, I don't want to talk to you." He was like, okay, well, you know what? what the fuck are you? you know, if I if I'm leaving, I'm leaving to who I'm I leaving want. who I want to go to. Yeah. You know, and, and and that's how he ended up at Real Madrid. So I didn't know that. Um I didn't really realize and it opened my eyes to how the myth of Sir Alex's ruthlessness was actually a reality. Hmm. Yeah. How ruthless he was. Yeah. I didn't really realize how ruthless he was and 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 and, and that documentary to me, he wasn't he was a big Beckham fan, and he loves the boy. You can clearly see that he's one of his kids. But it was almost like, like, there's nobody bigger than the club. I always, I always knew that, but he was very, very ruthless. They kind of, while you're on that, they kind of painted him a little bit in a bad light. Yeah, uh, they did. Yeah. And they I, teetered I think, back and forth, but I think, I think he was okay really with did. that. Yes. Um, the last thing, uh, the last two things, was how supportive Victoria was. Um, you know, through that, um, you know, I always thought she was a bit well-to-do, a little bit stuck up, mm-hmm. you know, and told him what to do, et cetera. But clearly from the documentary, you know, it was him that was like, hey, yep. we're going to Paris. We're going to America. We're going to Spain. And she followed him everywhere and supported him. And I, it changed my opinion of her in a way. Sure. Yeah. Um, she, she came off really good. Yeah, it changed my she opinion did. of her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the last thing was, you know, like Beckham was my idol growing up, you know, and, and um, you know, you can ask me mom. Um, haircuts, clothing. I had a very, very similar free kick style that was modeled off his technique. The dedication to the sport um, was molded based off him. Um, you know, and after that documentary, really, to be honest with you, just watching it in depth, you know, I couldn't really be more prouder to say that David Beckham was my childhood idol. I loved him, you know, and, and, and that documentary was really well done. Yeah. I, I think the documentary was very well done. I think Nate nailed it when they said they told a little bit. They told it, they weaved it, and they told a really good story. I think this documentary was made for the American uh, fan getting into soccer. 
one, uh, it's very pro Manchester United, by the way, and I and I and I don't. I don't dislike that. It's it's his club. That's who he loves. He loves the club. He still yeah. to this day loves the club. I get it. I have friends and my brother who refuse to watch it because they don't want to watch anything pro Man United. And then they, they didn't grow up saying I love David Beckham or anything like that. I was a huge Beckham fan. Nate, I'll let you go ahead chime in. So I'm gonna uh, go to a part. At the time that all this happened, like a significant portion of the time, soccer wasn't that popular in the States. No, it wasn't. And they no. talked about – so that's like the thing. The, all the stuff in England, all that stuff that happened in the World Cup, all, I don't know if it was just because of my age. No clue. Really? Same. No clue. Yep. Really? No clue. Didn't follow England. Didn't hear about it. I can't recall ever hear about it in the sports press here. It wasn't – I. Yeah. Maybe maybe I was just naive. Maybe I was just too young. But I don't don't recall anything. And there was a point where, after all this, uh, he went to the states, and Victoria Beckham was saying, "Well, we kind of sheltered him from everything." I don't think it was so much uh, that they sheltered the Spice Girls sheltered him from everything. Yeah. I think it was the fact that he was in the U.S. and everyone was just going, "Oh yeah, that's Victoria Beckham's husband. He plays <laughs> he plays football yeah. or no, something. You're, he you're plays soccer wrong. or something." I, I, it just wasn't a thing. Correct. I so, think I think the documentary, and I'm going to counter Danny's point a little bit here. I think the documentary overdid it. How much abuse he took. I know he took a lot of, bu- of abuse. I know this. Trust me. I get it. I think they went and took it from where it really was to here for the story. I think they told a very good story. 